much worrying. Let's look at this one by one. Number one is responding to the predicted famine in the world. Responding to the predicted farming in the world. There are three things we're looking at there. Number one, proper attitude towards a prevailing farming. Number two, practical activities during the present farming. Number three, personal assurance despite plural families number one is the proper attitude towards a prevailing famine in genesis chapter 42 reading from verse one now when jacob saw that there was corn in egypt jacob said unto his sons why do we look one upon another? Verse 2 tells us, it says, And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down, see them, and buy for us from this, that we may live and not die. Jacob saw. Jacob Heard. At a time of farming, we we'll keep our eyes open. Not everybody is famished. How are they making it? Not everybody is hungry. How are they making it? Not everybody is going to bed at night without taking anything. How are they making it? See and look around you and see how other people are coping and you'll not just fold your hand and say there is famine yes there is famine but have the proper attitude look at that it says and he heard there is calm the corn may not be at your doorstep the corn may not be in your house there but there is corn there is a place where god had revealed himself unto them and they had prepared for the farming and now there is corn there and they're not holding the corn they're not hiding the corn they're selling the corn here and see and as you hear and see, then you will rise up and have the right attitude. You don't have any job, open your eyes, look around. Hear what is going on, what efforts other people are making. Have you gone to university and then there is no job? Although you have certificate, don't you sit down and be saying, I'm a graduate, I'm a graduate, I don't have any work. Open your eyes and see and let your ears hear what other people like you, what they're doing and how they're making it. You'll make it in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 41. We're reading from verse 30. Chapter 41, verse 30. And there shall arise, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. Look at verse 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of the famine following, for it shall be very grievous. Plan. Joseph told a Pharaoh, he said, there's going to be a famine and it's going to prevail upon the land. Seven long years. If you waste the years of plenty, if you waste what you've got now, the abundance and the surplus you have now, seven years are coming. There'll be nothing. You will forget the fruitfulness of the land when those seven years come. Plan. You know, in your life, there may be times it's like no trouble, no trial. Everybody is friendly. Everybody is nice. You are climbing and riding on top of the wings. Look ahead. 
what he times change that the time you prepare yourself now you embolden yourself now you encourage yourself now you get ready should the table turn and should things become different the strength you need for the difficult hour and the courage you need for the traumatizing time this is the time when everything is all right that you have to prepare the proper attitude towards the prevailing famine look at verse 57 there in verse 57 and all the countries came into egypt to joseph for to buy corn because that the famine was so in all lands it was famine everywhere even in egypt there was famine how did they survive why is it all these other people they are coming to buy in egypt they saved a percentage of what they had at the time of plenty there are people that they get income regular income they eat up everything every month they don't think that what if times change what if time of farming comes what are we going to eat you know what you do exactly what they did in egypt by the counsel of joseph they arched the cross in the plenteous years and then they saved a percentage that they will not touch and they opened up storehouses and in those storehouses they were able to preserve crop and preserve the corn and preserve the food you know at that time Joseph must have been very wise when you store up corn maize food the crops of the land in a particular place insects will get there termites will get there rats will get there and all those animals will get there they will spoil what you are putting there joseph must have been very wise that although he had those storehouses and he preserved the corn the corn was still fresh when it came time to eat the corn and he could sell out corn that had quality why because even at that early stage of history he had something to preserve the quality of the corn do you do that what you are getting do you preserve what you are earning do you save some and do you say i'll save this i'll save this i'll save that and if you save in a proper way in a good bank there'll be returns they'll give you some percentage i know the percentage is low at this time but still it's better than eating up everything so that at the time of scarcity at the time of recession at the time of famine you have something to take amen you see what jesus did he told the five thousand people and more because five thousand men but we have women and children he told them to sit down and then he took the food five loaves and two pieces of fish he looked up to heaven and he blessed and gave to his disciples and he distributed to them and when they had all eaten and were filled he said gather together gather together all that remains don't waste anything it might appear i'm all right now I'm filled up now everything is okay now look at what remains save up some for the coming hour i pray god will give us wisdom 
and everything you have everything you have everything you have you save some to prepare for the days coming ahead number one proper attitude towards a prevailing family number two here practical activities during the present famine practical activities let's look at genesis chapter 42 i'm reading from verse 5 and the sons of israel came to buy corn among those that came among those that came among those that came those were other people not of the family of Jacob they were other people not of the descendants of Abraham they are heathens but we must live and though they were heathens they used their common sense and they searched out where to find the food if unbelievers use their common sense they say come on common sense if unbelievers have common sense the children of abraham and the children of israel they also have common sense and if the heathens and the pagans are using their common sense we too should use our common sense the fact that we belong to abraham does not mean we cannot use our natural senses as the other people came the sons of israel came to buy corn among those that came for the farming wars and the land of canaan look at chapter 43 verses 1 and 2 and the farming was so in the land sometimes when farming is so terrible painful we feel hungry real biting hunger there are people that cannot do anything when they are hungry the famine is too much the hunger is too much their eyes are closed their tears block their view or their vision they cannot hear anything they cannot see anything they cannot get up and do anything because you know the farming has taken their mind has taken their thoughts and thoughtfulness has taken their eyesight and insight no when there is farming yes you're hungry yes you feel pain yes it appears everything around you is dry and dreary all the same let that sense that is common that other people are using during that time of scarcity and recession let your own come alive look at verse 2 there and verse 2 tells us and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had bought out of egypt their father said unto them go again go again you've got it before now you know where the food is go again we don't like to go that man spoke to us roughly the first time we went well you must wait the name they call you the criticism they gave you the rough language they spoke to you or the food that will keep you alive which one is greater you come to the point in your life where you have to forget the criticism where you have to forget everything they have said and the way you felt i felt bad when that man was talking to us and the way i felt I don't want to see the face of that man again the message i had the other time i felt so bad i don't want to go there again and the things that the man challenged us with and he said bring your younger brother i don't want to go there again my brother my brother there are things that happen in life they criticize us they persecute us 
they cause trouble for us they say things that we would not want to have repeated again unto us we have to go again that's where there is food that's why there is plenty and if we're going to overcome the famine we have to take practical steps and over and overlook all these uh, you know minor minor things they did this against me they said that against me and they looked at me in a particular way and the language they use about me i don't like that the food is greater the food is more you're keeping alive if you don't keep alive how do you fulfill the promise the covenant that had been given to abraham if you're going to see the fulfillment of your dream and the fulfillment of your calling there are things we we'll have to forget what they did what they said how they acted we have to forget and go again and go again and go again you will go again I remember I was just thinking about it yesterday truly yesterday 1951 I didn't like how the teachers were treating me in particular I didn't like the way they drilled me they drilled us and I decided I will not go back to school again and actually something happened that day my father normally would have gone to work and he's he was a dutiful man never will he stop his work even when he was sick he would still go to work so i thought my father had gone to work and so i left school and i came home Lo and behold, I saw my father. I was thinking, what's he doing here? He didn't go to work. And uh, so my father asked me, what happened? Oh, I said, they sent us from school to go and collect money for harvest. I said, is that right? How much? I told him the amount. He took the amount, put it in the pocket, and said, let's go. And so we got to the school. And my father met the headmaster and said, my boy came home and I was surprised. He said, we actually wanted to contact you. Your boy does not stay in school. So my father, he was a militant man, disciplinarian. He said, headmaster, can you do me a favor? He said, yes. Get all, this, all the pupils together, 1951. Get them into the assembly. They got them into the assembly. And then they told a hefty boy there to mount me. And my father himself, in front of all the school, the student body, whacked me, whipped me. It was painful. Apart from the pain of the beating, the shame. And so we finished that day. And the following day, my father said, go back to school. If you do that again and you abscond, you see what I did? <laughs> so I became bold. And so I told my father, no more school. You did that to me publicly yesterday, no more schooling. Okay, he said, what do you want to do? I said, I do farming. He gave me cutlass, go to the farm. He didn't say, my son, don't do that. And also I said, I show him. And so I went to the farm, cut off all the branches and all the cocoa yam leaves and every cut off everything. And then I came back home. The following day, go back to, I said, no, no more schooling. And I did the same thing. Now, my father realized that my future will be endangered. So before the next term, my father called me and sat me down and said, my son, you know what? I didn't have education. I wanted to have education. And it's because of my desire, that's why I did what I did. 
and my father for the first time said i am sorry and i took that and i said okay i'll go back to school and i went back to school if i didn't go back i will not be where i am today i will not have gone to secondary school I would not have gone to university. I would not have made first class in mathematics. I would not have established deeper life, Bible, church. Go back again. Bewitch me in front of everybody. Disgrace me in front of everybody. Go back to school. Go back to that family. Go back to your home Don't say because of what happened Never again Never say never A great future is before you Swallow your pride And swallow everything you said I will not again Think about your future You'll go back I said you'll go back and it came to pass when they had eaten up the corn which they had brought out of Egypt. Their father said unto them, Go again and buy us a little food. Look at number three here. Number three here. Personal assurance despite plural families. There are Families of different sides and different shapes and different sizes. There is farming of food, there's the farming of the world, there is farming of um, just no satisfaction and no joy in the heart, in the life, or in the family. But whatever families there are first of all find out why find out why is this happening why are we going through this that we're going through and then find out how do we resolve this problem don't just keep on doing the same thing that you did before and the thing that you did before that you are doing uh, is not bringing out results, it's not generating any solution. Don't do that. Find out how can we resolve uh, this problem in the family. How can we resolve that? My dry relationship with my director, my employer, and the head of my department, and there is famine. We cannot even talk. If I go this way or go that way, how do we resolve that? Find out when did that begin to happen? How did that happen? And how do we resolve the problem? In the family, there is, uh, you know, the scarcity of love. That there is a famine of love and fellowship in the family, and it's eating up the heart of the family. The father is not happy, the mother is not happy, the children, they're noticing what is happening. Find out how can we solve this problem of the famine in our family, in the church. There is a famine of the word of God. There is no life in the message. There is no life in the preaching. There is no life as it comes to the people. And the people just come just for duty. Well, I'm a member of the church and this is my local church. I just come. But everything is dry. When did that begin and how do we solve that problem? Personal assurance despite plural families. We're looking at Second Chronicles chapter 6 and I'm reading from verse 26. Second Chronicles chapter 6 verse 26. When the heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against me 
why, why is the famine? Why is the heaven shut up? Why is there no rain? Because they have sinned against me. Why is that dryness in the heart? No joy, no happiness, no fulfillment. And there is no joy in wanting to serve the Lord because they have sinned against me. Why is it? There is that famine and dryness in the family. Husband and wife. This is not the way I thought the marriage will be. The honeymoon is gone. I can't even remember any time this uh, my wife or this my husband loved me. There is famine because they have sinned against me. And whenever there's that dryness or famine in our relationship, don't just go on, go on, uh, beating the bench and saying, Oh God, oh God, what have I done? You've done something yet if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou didst dost afflict them verse 27 it says then hear thou from heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel when thou hast taught them the good way there is famine there's scarcity there's recession there's poverty and we're suffering we need to be taught the way of the Lord. It's, it's not just saying God will make a change. God is a miracle worker. God will supply. And then we say, Amen, Amen. We go back home. Nothing is happening. We must be taught the good way of the Lord. Wherein they should walk and send rain upon thy land, which thou hast given unto thy people for an inheritance in verse 28 it says if there be death that's famine in the land if there be pestilence if there be blasting or mildew locusts or caterpillars if their enemies besiege them in the cities of their land whatsoever saw or whatsoever sickness there be well the solution chapter 7 reading from verse 13 in chapter 7 verse 13 if i shut up heaven not satan if i the god of abraham isaac and jacob if i the almighty the most holy if i the one that is higher than the highest if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locusts to devour the land or if i send pestilence among my people look at verse 14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves shall humble themselves there are times when somebody is going through a famine there may be job vacancy somewhere and then we confront the brother brother how are you i'm all right any need need me christian no need any problem no sir do you need a place you can work i'm not ready to answer that question they are so proud they will even reject and push away somebody who wants to introduce them to a place where the famine can be brought to an end pride but if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves there are people that will not take the step to ask their pastor the group pastor any question and they will tell their wives if you publicize what is going on in our house here 
That's the edge of the marriage. I want to keep my dignity and I want to keep my self esteem. If you go out and tell any woman leader, and that woman leader will tell her husband, and they know that this is what we're going through, then you understand by yourself you have ended the marriage. That's not humility, my brother. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, you are thoughtful and you think of whatever it is you are doing that God calls sin or transgression or wickedness and you turn from that then will i hear from heaven you he will hear from heaven even today you he will hear from heaven then i will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land i miss my amen there we we'll come to point number two now point number two recognizing the painful forgetfulness forgetfulness of the word and forgetfulness we recognize it through the word look at genesis chapter 41 verse 9 then speak the chief butler unto pharaoh saying 